Hello everyone, in this video we will learn about high-end retouching with frequency separation. Let's get started. Open your photo in Photoshop. If it's a raw file, it will automatically open camera raw filter, like the one I'm using. I'm gonna do some lighting and color correction in camera raw filter. First I adjust the white balance by moving the tint slider towards purples to remove the greenish shade from my photo. As you can see, there is some green color in the highlights. Then make the entire photo lighter by increasing the exposure. Then some adjustments on shadows and highlights. With this icon, you can see the areas that are overexposed. Also increasing clarity and texture a little. Now in the color mixer section and luminance tab, I increase and decrease the luminance of different colors to see where each color exists in the photo. You can see red, orange and yellow are used more than other colors in this photo. and there's some purple in the background. Now I'm gonna adjust each color in hue, saturation and luminance tabs to get the results I want. You can see before and after of your adjustments by pressing backslash key. Then I add a little bit of yellow to highlights from color grading section. After I'm done with the adjustments, I click on this arrow and select open as object, so I can change my adjustments later if I want. If your photo's color profile doesn't match your current workspace, just choose second option in this window and click on OK. I rename this layer by double clicking on its name. Then make two copies from it with Ctrl J keys and name them Color and Texture. Now with Texture layer turned off, select the color layer and from Filter menu select Blur and Custom Blur. Increase the radius till the skin is completely smooth and see no texture. 20 is good for me, then click on OK. Now turn on the texture layer and convert it from a smart object to a rasterized layer. For this, right click on the layer and select rasterized layer. Then from the image menu, click on apply image. In this window, change the layer from merge to your color layer, blending to subtract, and scale and offset values to 2 and 128 and click on OK. Now you have the texture and color of your photo separated in two layers. This technique is called frequency separation, because we separated high frequencies which are texture from low frequencies which are colors. On the texture layer, you can see all the small details of skin easily and work on them. For even better visibility, I create a curves adjustment layer and make some extreme contrast by adding two points on the curve and positioning them like this. Now we can begin to work on the skin. You can use healing brush tool which you can choose with J key or from here for smoothing the skin. Or you can choose clone stamp tool which I prefer personally with the S key on your keyboard or from here in the toolbox. Now just take sample from the smooth parts of the skin by holding alt key and clicking. Then click on the areas you want to remove.
If you want to see your photo in normal mode, just change the blending mode of the texture layer from normal to linear light. And as you can see now, we have a very smooth skin which also has its natural texture. I group two layers to see the before and after. Then I change the blending mode of the texture layer to normal again and continue to work on the other parts of the skin. Okay, I think that's enough for this skin. Now I turn off the curves layer and change the blending mode of the texture layer to linear light. Then I press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E keys to create a merge layer of all the layers that I have. Now with the burn tool and range set to mid-tones and exposure to 2%, I paint under the cheekbones to make this area just a little darker. I think it's too much here and I just raise it with razor tool. Then I pick the sponge tool and set it smooth to saturate and paint on the eyes to make their color pop and also on her makeup. And one little trick which I use almost with every photo is making the highlighted areas even brighter and make them shine more. For example, the reflected lights in the eyes. I pick the dodge tool and with the range set to mid-tones or highlights, I paint on the eyes, on the jewelry, watches or other accessories and also on the highlights of the lips. Then also on the bright areas of the hair. And the opposite with the burn tool for the dark parts of the hair. That's nice. Now I'm thinking about changing the color of her lipsticks, maybe to some dark red or something. Let's try it. For this I first create a hue and saturation adjustments layer. From the properties panel, I select the color I want to change. Then set the lightness to 100 to see the range of the colors that I'm working on. And then select the range that I want to change. Now I set the lightness to zero again and change the hue slider. I adjust the setting again and after I'm done, I click on the adjustment layer. And with the black color as my background color, I press Ctrl backspace to fill the mask of the adjustment layer with black. Then I paint with white brush on the areas that I want to change color which are lips.
Okay, now I can change the hue and saturation settings to get the results I want. That looks good. Now I make a copy of the layer that I'm working on and turn off all the layers below it. What? Looks like I've erased this part by accident. That's okay, I turn on the bottom layers and make a merge layer by Ctrl Alt Shift E keys and copy this layer and convert it to a smart object. I want to whiten her teeth with camera raw filter. So I press Ctrl Shift A to open camera raw filter. I zoom on the teeth, open color mixer and in the saturation tab with the help of this button decrease the colors on teeth. Just click and drag to left. Now with the same button in the luminance tab, I click and drag the mouse to right to make the teeth brighter. Then click on OK. Now invert the filter mask with Ctrl Shift I keys and paint with a white brush on the teeth. You can adjust the opacity if you want to make them look more natural. The other thing I want to do with this photo is to remove this flying hair. So I create a new layer, zoom on the hair, and pick the spot healing brush tool and paint on the hair. You know what? I think long stamp tool will work better for this one. So I press S on my keyboard and hold Alt and click on the background to sample it, then paint on the hair. Okay, that looks good. I created a merge layer again and converted it to a smart object. The other thing I want to do is to give her hair more volume to look fuller. For this, I select liquify filter from filter menu. Now with the first tool selected, I adjust the brush size and begin to click and drag on the hair. Watch this. That looks nice. Also on a new layer, I'll fill some of these empty spaces with clone stamp tool. satisfied with the results. Actually, one important thing to consider is to know when to stop and not go crazy with your photos. 
If you are new to my channel, click on the subscribe button to see more videos like this. And obviously you will go to hell if you don't click on the like button. If you have any questions, I don't care at all, but you can ask them in the comment section and because I'm a very nice guy, I'll answer them all. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.